to speak to you today. Okay, so we started the broadcast. Uh, let me just introduce myself. My name is Ama Yawson, and I am the author of Sune's Gift, How Sune Overcame Bullying to Reclaim God's Gift. And I've started a new series include, entitled The Gift, in which mm -hmm. every week I hope to speak to thought leaders about issues of bullying, self-esteem, stereotyping, etc. And I'm very happy to have our guest today, Rainier, who is the genius behind The Love Life of an Asian God, which is an absolutely amazing blog and Facebook page. It's an amazing channel celebrating Asian manhood and providing uh, resources for women who are of, of all races, especially non-Asian women, who are interested in meeting and getting to know a wonderful Asian Prince Charming. So, uh, Rainier, thank you for coming on. Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm going to jump right into the questions. If do the questions, hopefully you'll be able to tell our audience more about your amazing platform. So, the first Definitely. question is, why is it wonderful and amazing, and why is it a great gift to be an Asian man right now? I think one of the things that... Um, is sort of an untold benefit about being an Asian American man is that you can really go against the grain of what is expected of American men. Now, personally, I'm of the belief that uh, the gender expectation of an American man is really damaging for men in general. I think that you are expected to be really hardened and you can't show any emotions and I think that over time you really start to miss out on key experiences and a lot of times you know these men don't get in tap with their more sensitive side or they don't get to uh, be uh, more understanding of women mm -hmm. and so I think that um, for a lot of young boys that um, it really puts this pressure on the type of man that they need to be and so that's why you see a lot of them who are really you know, aggressive and you know they feel like they need to be assertive whereas for Asian men I think that the expectation is the opposite I think that they expect that we don't have to be that way and because of that lowered expectation we can actually freely without any pressure switch between both and so growing up I never had that same pressure as some of my other friends who weren't Asian to go into football and to be the quarterback or anything like that. And so for me, I think it helped me develop um, a more balanced sense of my masculinity. Um, and of course, you you can be an Asian man, you can you know be big and strong, and you can be on the football team. Uh, but if you're not, then I think that you know it's um, it's a little bit more relaxing knowing that people don't have that sort of uh, pressure. Uh, instilled upon you. And I think that that is one of the things that a lot of people don't understand or they don't realize that that could be a benefit about being an Asian American man. No, I appreciate that comment. Absolutely, because um, I'm the mother of two boys who are black mm -hmm. like me and I often feel as if for black men it's the opposite. Like all oh, yeah. the images of black manhood on TV and gangster rap, etc. or all these like hyper, hyper violent, hyper sexual, <clears throat> like just horrible, horrible images that I really don't want my boys to feel any pressure to emulate because I, I believe that it's um it's really damaging and it's really imprisoning when men oh, yeah. express their emotions. Oh yeah, exactly. And it, and it's really for me it's really upsetting because, you know, I definitely see that with black men where, you know, if if you know, say for example, um, you know, people are always making fun of Drake because oh, Drake is the 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 sensitive the sensitive musician, and I think that that is sort of the trap that a lot of black men could fall into. Whereas if you know, the second that they're they're revealed as having feelings outside of you know you know anger or you know anything like that, then they're sort of demonized for that, and I think that that's unfortunate. No, no, 100% agree, but my, you know, my prayer is, I'm glad that it's liberating to a certain extent for Asian men, but my prayer in general is that everybody will get your liberation. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, very good. Okay, so that's the gift of Asian manhood, uh, and yeah. my next question for you is, do you feel as if Asian men, you know, on the flip side, experience any sort of bullying, including stereotype threat? by virtue of the fact that images in the media of Asian men tend to kind of also be distorted. Yes, so I think that there are a couple different ways um, that I was thinking about it. I think growing up, um, the biggest issue for a lot of Asian American men is the sense of otherness. Um, 
you know, one of the things is that white men, black men, um, they all encounter their own sort of racial um, troubles. But one of the things that Asian men um, encounter is, I don't look American. Mm. And I remember growing up, um, a lot of Asian kids, you know, they, they were bullied for that. Like, oh, you know, your name sounds weird. Or um, one story that I know that resonates for a lot of Asian people um, in general is, you know, being that kid at lunchtime and having, you know, the Tupperware with rice and, you know, spam or, you know, having, you know, Chinese fried noodles or whatever. And, and and having a lot of people like look at you like, oh my god, you're so weird, like that's so different, you know, it smells nasty. And so I think that what that means is um, for a lot of Asian men growing up, there's this sense automatically that I don't belong. You know, my house smells different, I wear different clothes or, you know, my family came from a different place. And so automatically you feel like, you know, do I belong in this school? Do I belong in this group of friends? Like, why, you know, do, wow. do, do you want to hang out with me? Um, and what it does is it, it, it creates a lot of self-hatred towards your own culture. Um, and I think that as you grow up, so you're already automatically just confused about, you know, who, who am I supposed to be, you know? Uh, what, what do people expect of me? Mm -hmm. But as you get older, I think that one of the most damaging stereotypes um, is the idea of what you are supposed to be as a man. I think that uh, growing up in high school, when once you know you start trying to go out there and date, uh, you slowly start to realize that not only do you have to find people who are interested in your personality as you know a guitar player or as a nerd or as a jock. But then you have to find people who are interested in you simply because you're Asian. So first you have to find people who are interested in you because you're Asian. Then you have to find if they're interested in you based off of your specific type. Um, and a lot of people have this expectation that, you know, oh, in, at least in high school, oh, you know, I, I want the guy to be like the guy from Twilight. Or I want them to be like, you know, like this football player X. Um, and then you realize that, you know, none of those guys look like me. None of those guys act like me. Um, and you start to get denied, and you start to be, have people tell you that, oh, you know, I'm not into Asian guys. Sorry, you're really nice, you're sweet, you're intelligent, but I'm just not into Asian guys. And then it starts to spiral down. You start to imagine, and you start to think to yourself, you know, why is, you know, why aren't people accepting me for for this one thing? Um, and then, you know, of course, you eventually go online, you research, you know, how do people feel about Asian man, whatever. Um, and I think that what ends up happening is that uh, you you end up having to ask a lot of these questions in yourself, and you start to put yourself down. And you start to say, you know, maybe I'm not man enough, or maybe I'm not um, what these women want. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I was going to okay. ask, what are the stereotypes? What are the, and, and how are they sort of propagated? So, I mean, in my mind, I follow your blog, so I saw something that was really telling. You had yeah. posted some sort of article about dating <laughs> dynamics, and it explained that Asian men and black women were both the least likely to find partners outside of their race or find partners in general in the U.S., and there was Correct. a opinion there by some theorists that said Asian men and black women have both found themselves virtually abandoned by their Correct. potential mates of their own race. Um, Correct. You know, I, I can go at you know go on and on about you know the sort of yeah. stereotypes about you know mammy or black women being yeah. masculine or black women being mean or being like you know um, loose that have you know which are centuries and centuries old. What is going on with Asian men and why exactly are these stereotypes so um, so common and how are they being spread? I think that, I mean, if I really had to dumb it down, and I, I know that a lot of Asian guys are probably going to hate me for saying this, but I think a lot of what it comes down to, and and I say this in the blog and I say this to other people, is literally the kryptonite for, for this whole Asian male stereotypes is the whole myth about the penis. And I think that all of it always goes back to that because it's such an and, – and I wrote about this because it's such a hard thing to prove and to disprove. 
You know, if someone says something about me down there, I can't just be like, okay, you know, drop my pants. Okay, here you go. I'll prove you wrong or I'll prove you right or whatever, you know? So it's really hard to, to, to say otherwise. And so I think that all of it, I, I, I just experienced, it always goes back to that, you know? Go on any YouTube any YouTube video of an Asian guy um, in an interracial relationship, and people are always making comments about that. Oh, you know, he might be a good singer, but he has a small penis or whatever, you know? And I think that a lot of the, the stereotypes, these start to stem off of that. Oh, you're weak. Oh, the Asian guy, he's short. He doesn't have any muscles. Therefore, he has blah, 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 you know? Um, and it always just gets dumbed down to that type of conversation. Um, and I don't think that people realize how how uh, powerful that kind of a negative stereotype is because, you know, when you are looking at it from the framework of, um, you know, the masculine American male, he in and itself, his value is placed in his, you know, in his pants. Mm. And if what is inside doesn't, doesn't measure up, then what is he? Okay. You know? Okay, no, very, very interesting. You think it really all revolves around this myth or stereotype that Asian men have small penises. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, the thing is, you know, it's so so ridiculous to me, though, because yeah. Asia is such a humongous continent, and I see yeah. Asian men who are of all sizes, right? So there's a stereotype yeah. of small Asian men, but I meet Korean guys all the time, particularly yeah. who are both tall and, like, really broad and big. But for some yeah. or Filipino men or Filipino yeah. people who are chubby and not don't fit that stereotype of being like really short and really skinny. I mean, there's just so much variety on the continent of Asia that it's yeah. really shocking that people think that they yeah. can just you know sum up Asian men in like one one word or two words: yeah. small penis. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But and and I, and I think that that. A, a similar but opposite um, reality exists with black men. I think that a lot of black men, um, women who uh, who are interested in dating black women, uh, black men outside of you know if, if, they're, if they're white or if they're Asian or whatever, I think that they, they gravitate towards the 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 black penis stereotype. And I think that it's sort of the same situation where they have this certain expectation, and they think that by extension, oh well, you know, because of what's inside, he must be this hyper masculine, strong, big, you know. And I think that that it, it sort of plays out in a similar fashion. No, no, I could I could certainly agree. Which also, and it also seems kind of weird to me too, because. Africa's like a humongous continent. So there are pygmies who are like among the shortest people on the face yeah. of the earth. And then you have um, dinkas who are like incredibly tall and skinny. Yeah. And then you have, you know, I mean, so much variety that it's hard for me to believe that every single black man descendant of the continent of Africa <laughs> exactly. is big and small with a big penis. Yeah. Like impossible. Exactly. Not true. <laughs> exactly. So. Just impossible. Okay. Yeah. Well, okay, so now we're going to talk about overcoming it. So yeah. uh, I know through your blog and you write about your, you know, wonderful relationship with a woman who's, yeah. you know, not Asian, etc. So yeah. please talk how you are overcoming it and how other Asian men are overcoming it. And when I say overcoming, I sort of mean two things. Mm -hmm. One kind of uh, gaining that self-acceptance internally that you discuss as being mm -hmm. the child of immigrants and always feeling different. And then there's this idea, like, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a child of immigrant. My parents are both yeah. from Ghana, West Africa. So I relate to yeah. you in terms of the food being different, your name being yeah. funny. But then yeah. the easy thing about me is people looking at me before I say my name don't necessarily assume that I'm the child of immigrants because yeah. I can pass for an African-American. Um, yeah. Asians, despite the fact that Asians, some Asians have been in this country for centuries, yeah. it's just always an assumption exactly. that Asians and immigrants. Um, but so, so yeah, so the two parts of the overcoming, one, that general self-acceptance, you're American, you're just as American as everyone else, self-acceptance yeah. of your culture, whether you're eating, you know, bulgogi yeah. or whatever it is that you're yeah. eating, um, yeah. and, and, and owning that, and then two, also the sort of social aspect and finding your confidence in dating, finding your sexy, and finding women who are open to loving you and loving your culture. How are you overcoming it in those two respects? Well... I think for me, my personal experience was that I feel that for all Asian Asian guys, or at least for most of them, they are all going to hit that same roadblock that I did, which is they start to question, you know, am I a man? Uh, you know, why don't people like me? 
uh, and I think that a lot of it happens, you know, in you know, in in, in middle school, high school, it's sort of in your teenage years. And I think that in order to get past that, you have to ask all those questions. It sucks, but there's no way to expedite that process. You have to go through it, and you have to experience the rejection, or you have to experience uh, people's beliefs of those stereotypes. But then after that, what ends up happening is that you almost that whole entire time is just you just stripping yourself down. And then at the very end, you start to ask yourself, well, does all that matter? Is that who I am? Um, and the path towards really forging um, a new identity for yourself and building yourself new is knowing that since a lot of people have this, this really blank slate or this really you know, low expectation of you, you really can create any identity of yourself. And I think that that's one of the great things. Unfortunately for black men, there is a specific um, idea of who they are supposed to be. And if you deviate from that, then you're sort of ostracized. Whereas for Asian men, we can be the tech startup or we can be a you know, musician and there isn't that much hostility against that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that if Asian men start to learn to pick up things along the way, you know, listen to different kinds of music, talk to different types of people, um, and really just get yourself out there. I think that you'll eventually learn that, you know, your masculinity doesn't have to be a template. You don't have to buy... You one know, second, one second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sorry. Okay, yeah. So as you were saying, you realized that. But I'm, I'm very curious about that answer, though, because I think of what happened to um, Jeremy Lin. He was yeah. trying to be, uh, you know, obviously he's a famous basketball player. Yeah. And I feel as if he, because he wasn't trying to be a musician or a yeah. startup tech guy, yeah. he still experienced those stereotypes. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And I think that one of the things that within the Asian community about Jeremy Lin is that, you know, we loved him. We thought he was like this you know, national hero, uh, but there was always that faction of Asian people who were like, yeah, but, you know, he's a smart guy, he's a family guy, he went to, uh, he went to, to, to Harvard, um, so it's like, yeah, he, he did the sports thing, but he's also typical in that way, so it's sort of difficult, like, okay. I feel bad for Jeremy, I'm totally for him, but I think that in that case, it's like, ah, you know, at the end of the day, he's still one of those Asians, like, but... <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, I mean, I think that um, as long as Asian guys start to learn that, you know, they can be like Jeremy Lin, they could yeah. play basketball, and they can do it professionally, um, I think that is how they will go ahead and learn to gain their own confidence. They have to, they have to, ex they have to expect the fact that that there isn't a template for the for the thriving Asian American male, at least now. You have to design it yourself. You have to pick and choose all the different elements for yourself. Perfect. For any specific um, advice with respect to dating? Because your blog is kind of dating oriented. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when it, when it comes to dating, um, okay, so my, pro <laughs> this is horrible, and I do not recommend this. And, yeah, just know that I do not endorse this, but in <laughs> high school, I would have never been interested in interracial, interracial dating had it not been for the one time in that in, in my life when I was like 16 or 17, and I actually denounced to myself, I was like, I am never dating Asian women ever, and because wow. it was a lot of it was it was a lot of resentment because at that time I think that a lot of Asian women were doing the opposite where they were saying I'm never dating Asian men, and they weren't. They were dating like all all white guys. And I remember it was just time after time after time um, Asian girls saying, oh, sorry, I'm not interested in you. I'm interested in white guys. Like, really specifically saying it. Or sometimes they would I wouldn't even know them and they would tell that to me and I'm like, well, it's relevant. How? Um, but then, so for me, I, I, I said that, okay, I'm, I'm not going to, to date Asian women. And then once I learned that you know, hey, maybe I should try to see what it would be like if I'm interested in these people or these people or these people. I forced myself to put myself out there and to learn about the different cultures and eventually, you know, at first it was kind of a forced attraction but then after a while I was like, you know what, actually I think I am, I am interested in this. Mm -hmm. 
luckily I got over the whole like oh I'm never dating Asian women thing. So I, I do th- I do think that that is damaging for people no matter what race you are to like just completely block out an entire ethnicity, especially your own. Um, but specifically for other Asian men, um, if you're not doing the method that I did, um, I think that one of the best things is just look at it as you're making friends. Um, for most Asian people, they only have Asian friends. And I think that if you, get, you give yourself the opportunity to, to meet black men or black women or German people or whoever, um, eventually you'll start to learn that there are certain cultural differences, but at, this, at the end of the day, it's really not that different. You know, with my girlfriend right now, um, you know, I'm Asian and she's black, but at the end of the day, I'm not dating her because she's a black woman. I'm dating her because of who she is, because she's just as nerdy as me, or she loves going to restaurants like I do. Um, I think that Asian guys will have to learn to realize that. Sure. All right, this has been great, so I'm just going to do a recap. So we spoke to... Now, kindly pronounce your name so I'm not butchering it. Oh, so my name is uh, Rainier Meningding. Rainier, 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 Rainier. Yeah. Mening- like Mount Rainier. <laughs> Thank you. Who, we You're spoke welcome. to Rainier, who has, pro- has provided phenomenal information for us. So, one, he described the gift of being an Asian man, and part of that gift is the opportunity to fully embrace your humanity without the sort of pernicious stereotypes of hyper-masculinity, which is so present in American culture. So we describe that as being a gift, gift this, you know, in addition to, of course, all the wonderful cultural aspects. Number two, mm-hmm. Rainier has overcome bullying and reclaimed his gift, like our character, Sune. Uh, and how did he do that? He said, one, first, he kind of confronted all of those issues, confronted the sort of ethnic issues that he had growing up and feeling different and being perceived as being different. He confronted some of those stereotypes, most namely the stereotype of the sort of Asian man with a small penis. He actually took some time to look hard, think about those issues, research those issues, and then determined that he would have a completely clean slate in reinventing who he is as a human being, Asian or otherwise. And by doing that, and also by sort of opening his mind to uh, women of all races, he's fully reclaimed the gift and recognizes how phenomenal it is to be an Asian man. Is that a good summary, Rainier? It definitely is. It sounds perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So like no Sunday, he claimed his gift, and we hope you will too. So all the eight, okay, all the people out there, get it out your mind. Asia is a large continent, men of various penis sizes. We're going to eliminate for <laughs> here and for all, okay? Open your mind to the beautiful, wonderful, handsome men who might be perfect for you and maybe, and first of all, the size even matter that much, who might be phenomenal lovers, okay? So I hope everyone listening will do so, right? And give our Asian brothers some love. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.